In this video, I'm going to talk about generating the bridge site plan using the OHDOT CAD standards for OpenROSE Designer. So to get started, I want to create a container file for my sheet clipping process. And a container file will include all the references for the information that I want to show on my bridge site plan. Container files are covered in a separate video, so check that out if you haven't done so already. So what I'm going to do is create that container file by changing to the Ohio DOT workflow and on the apps tab, picking the create design files application. Change our category to bridges and click off to apply that filter. And then I'll just filter by sheet file types. You can see the bridge site plan is the first in the list. So when I turn that on, it's going to default to creating the first file with a 001 suffix and using the seed 2D design file. So to create the container file, I'm going to change it to a file suffix of 000. And I can see that the seed file changes to design seed when I do that. So I have in the settings, open last created file turned on. So I'll go ahead and create that site plan design file. So this is the container file that I will use to attach all my references. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and attach those. And then I'll return to the video once I have all those references attached. Okay, so I have my references attached for the information that I want to show on my bridge site plan. So I'm going to go ahead and generate the name boundaries to clip my sheet. So I'm in the Open Roads Modeling Workflow on the Drawing Production tab. I'm going to pick the Name Boundary tool. In this tool, I'm going to use the Civil Site Plan option or Civil Plan option to lay out my plan view name boundary. And then Drawing Seeds, I'm going to use the Bridge Site Plan option. We're going to go with a 20 scale plan for this example. And now I need to pick the Start and Stop station for my plan view portion. Now, when I change my detail scale, it's going to set the length that's available to place on the sheet. So I can put up to 440 feet. So I'm going to pick my center line by clicking in the Start Location field and clicking on the center line element. Once I've done that, I can enter my beginning station. I'm going to start at station 47 plus 80 for this. And then going 440 feet, I'm going to end at station 52 plus 20. I have my left and right offsets at their default values, again, based on my detail scale. And I do not want to create the drawing yet, so I'm going to turn that off. So when I click in the plan view, it will show me the name boundary limits. A second click will accept, oh, I should, that should be 52. Here we go. A second click will accept the ending station. And then a third click places the boundary in the file. So let's go ahead and pick the name boundary tool. And now we'll put in our civil profile name boundary. So again, in the list of drawing seeds, we're going to pick the bridge site plan, this time for the profile information, and I'll set my detail scale to 20. And as soon as I do that, that sets the rest of the values appropriately for that scale. I do want to make sure that my method is set to from plan group, so it's reading the station limits of the plan group and aligning that with that. Now I'll turn on create drawing and then click in the profile view to activate it, and then another click will show me that boundary. And the vertical extent is something I may need to adjust on that name boundary for a site plan, depending on how deep my proposed information goes. So if you feel that you need to adjust that, the workflow for that is to turn off Create Drawing and then place that boundary. And then I'll show you the tool to adjust it. If you don't need to adjust it, leave Create Drawing on, and it'll bring up the dialog that's going to be associated with creating that drawing. So I'm going to turn that off and just place the name boundary in the file. If I want to adjust that vertical extent in the name boundary tools, there is an adjust profile name boundary tool available. And the way that one works is I just click on that name boundary. And then as I move my mouse, it'll shift that up and down vertically. So if I wanted to change that to show a little more below rather than above, I could shift that. So I'll go ahead and move it down just a touch. And when I'm done, I'm going to go now back to the process to create my sheets. So I do that by picking the Manage Name Boundaries icon, which is this little box in the lower right. In the Manage Name Boundaries uh, dialog, I can expand the plan group, click on my plan group, and I want to make sure I have this little checkbox checked on to open the Create Drawing dialog. And then I'll use this icon to open the Create Plan Profile Drawing. So on this dialog, this is continuing where I would have been had I left the Create Drawing checkbox turned on when I was laying out that profile name boundary. So I've got an option here to create one sheet per design file or turn it off and I'll create the sheet in this file. I'm going to go ahead and send it to a separate file. It may not make sense why I'm only clipping one file, but I'm going to go ahead and do that just for illustration. 
So if I take a look, pulling my cursor, I can see that's defaulting to the structures and then the sheets folder under the structure file member folder. So that looks good. I can change it by using the browse button here. I'm going to name this file. So we'll name it with our PID number and then the structure number. And then our two character code for the site plan. And this is the 001 design file. So on the left is our plan information. The right is our profile information. So what I need to do here is make sure the scales match when I'm intending to create. So on the drawing model, I'm going to change that to 1 to 20. On the sheet model, we're going to leave this one at 1 to 1 and make sure the detail scales are 1 to 20. And I'm going to do the same thing for the profile. On the drawing model, we'll make that 1 to 20. This is 1 to 1 and this is 1 to 20. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK, and it will create that new design file. And in that file, it will create two drawing models, one for the plan, one for the profile, and then reference both of those to the sheet model. So here I can see the sheet model that was created. And in the sheet model, it has the uh, sheet border. And the intent in this is not to do any annotation or labeling in this file. That will be done in the drawing models. This is intended to be used for plotting and for our title block information. So if I take a look at the models in this file, I see there's two different drawing models based on their icon. One of them name drawing, that's our plan view. So there's the drawing model. And again, annotations intended to be placed in this model. And here's our drawing model for our profile. And I can place any annotations in this. Now the levels that are turned on or off in our bridge site plan are controlled by the container file. So we would go back to that file to make changes to the levels and that would carry through to the drawing and sheet models. If you have any questions or problems with this, feel free to contact the ODOT Office of CAD and Mapping Services. Thanks for watching the video.